Hello everyone, Vanish and Llama here, and today is a bit of a different video. I, well, so, not, well, you probably know this since my first video on my channel was a Star Wars video. But today I am doing a video, a Star Wars What If. So for those of you who aren't big fans of Star Wars, 5,000 years before Yoda was born, or 500 or something like that, I don't really know. Oh, there were multiple Sith run around. It wasn't just the Emperor and Darth Vader. There were dozens of other ones. And if you look them up on the internet, I guarantee you'll probably find a new favorite Star Wars character. But that being said, there were dozens of Sith Lords run around, like Darth Revan, Malak, and of course, the one we're talking about today, Malgus. And this is a Star Wars what if. So if you like it, well, hope you enjoy it. Today is a Star Wars What If. Now, for those of you who don't know, Darth Malgus was one of the most dangerous Sith Lords to, well, ever live. If, besides being very skilled with a lightsaber, he was basically like Darth Vader if Darth Vader was ten times stronger. So allow me to tell you the tale of what if Darth Malgus returned during the Clone Wars. Now, Darth Malgus was never defeated. He was never destroyed in battle. At all. His final battle with the Jedi, he fell into a carbonite tube, which left him frozen. They just never bothered to check if he was still alive or not. And he's probably not anymore, but what if he was still alive in that carbonite? What if Darth Malgus returned? Or what if begins on a dark side planet? Long thought to be forgotten, miners are working when they discover a mysterious chunk of carbonite. They begin to carve away at it when they see what looks to be a human face. They begin to carve deeper and deeper, not realizing what they're unleashing. They believe it to be a statue of a forgotten warrior. They somehow successfully remove the statue, though it weighs almost like a thousand pounds. They can't understand why the statue is so heavy. Granted, it's made of carbonite, but they then slowly realize, this is carbonite. This isn't a statue. This is a person. They manage, well, aboard the ship, they're returning from their scavenger job when the carbonite begins to melt. The person inside begins to blink, their eyesight still not yet used to seeing the light again. And one of the scavengers goes to the back to see what's going on, only to see that the carbonites begin to melt. They call to their friends in their native language, their native alien language, and they all get ready to see what's happening. Some of them, being very scared, pull out blasters and set to stun, while others set to kill. The mysterious man gets out. Out. The man is... Hulkin, he, with his metal robotic suit and kind of disturbed breathing, one of them walks closer and closer. They're about to, they're about to touch the man when the man grabs them and throws them into the wall. The man ignites his lightsaber, and even though he's blind, he's still able to avoid, or the blasts fired from their weapons. He uses the force to throw them all into the wall and slam them to the other wall to the side, and then cutting down the one whose blaster was set to kill. The man then stands back up and says, Where am I? Not understanding the alien speak, he simply cuts them all down. Now, still not fully able to see, he relies on force to guide him. He feels like he's been asleep for what feels like decades. He gets into the ship, and after f after a few minutes of sitting in the captain's chair, his eyesight begins to return. Wondering what happened, only having faint memories of fighting a Jedi with a yellow lightsaber and then falling into carbonite, he senses things are different. It's not like the old times. He senses there's not that much darkness in the universe anymore. When he was alive, there were millions of Sith who could threaten the Jedi, but now he senses three? No, five. Only five Darksiders. He, he can't figure it out why, but he senses one of them is very powerful. 
He doesn't understand what's happening. So the man cont- so the man takes the ship and flies to the nearest planet. It he disguises himself using the cloak from one of the aliens he's well just killed. Walking around, he's clearly an odd character being well mostly made of metal. He begins to walk around the alien planet. Some people stop and stare, others scaredly look away. The man looks confused. Things are different. The same, but different. He can't put his finger on it. On it. He stops at a local cantina looking for something to drink, removing his breathing respirator to actually drink. He asks the barkeeper, what year is it? The barkeeper replies, looking at the man, saying, Look, buddy, I don't have time for this. This, I'm about to close, and I don't. Malgus then smashes his hand through the table, saying, What year is it? What are you talking about, man? Malgus then picks the man up, using, using his metal hand, saying, I want to know. Where are the others? Other what? The other Sith Lords. The man being confused and scared, thinking, is this man with the Separatists? The guy saying, look, man, we don't want trouble with the Separatists. Separatists, Malgus replies. What's a Separatist? What happened to the Sith Empire? The man, even more confused, Sith Empire? Dude, the Sith Empire has been extinct for 10,000 years. Malgus then throws the man into the wall and looks at everyone in the cantina. And then walks away. Malgus, even more confused than ever, begins to question where what happened to the Sith Empire and who are the Separatists. After wandering around for a little bit longer, he stops at another cantina, home to some bounty hunters, some faces. From, says, he recognizes a, what looks to be a Mandalorian bounty hunter, but also different species of bounty hunters. He stops at one table and asks them questions about who are the separatists they begin to explain that the separatists are a group of people who want to be quote free from the republic he then asks them about the sith and the jedi they explain sith and the jedi like the sith empire of old hate to break it to you buddy but we aren't history teachers he then asks them about he then even with even less answers asks them about the Separatists and who's their leader. They explain he's a Sith named Count Dooku. He asks where can he find Count Dooku. They said that Count Dooku has a palace on a planet far away. They'll willing to drive him there, but it will cost him. Malgus just stands up and says, I am not in need of a bounty hunter when I, myself, can simply take care of the situation. The bounty hunter's looking very confused, saying, you're, try- you're gonna try and kill Count Dooku. Good luck. Many have tried. Many have failed. Malgus then says, he hasn't met me. Malgus then hijacks a ship from one of the bounty hunters as the bounty hunter chases after him. Sean, hey! He fires his blaster at the ship to no avail. The ship just takes off. Me- well, Malgus flies through the galaxy, even more confused than ever. Where? Is his empire? Where is his Sith empire? What happened to all the other Sith? Treya. Yeah, what about Siths like Treya, Revan, Malak? Look, thousands of Sith, the Sith empire he once knew. Where is it and what happened to it? Meanwhile, in the palace of a S- Count Dooku, he wakes up from his nap. Dawn in his cape, he walks over to get himself a drink. Looking out his window at the galaxy and his droid army, and how he believes he is doing what is, though he views as wrong, he also views it as right. The Jedi failed him. He's just trying to show the galaxy what the Jedi are truly like. But as he's about to take a drink, he hears what sounds like metal footsteps, and they don't sound like General Grievous. This... Dooku ignites his curved red lightsaber and says, If you well, if this is a Jedi, you were foolish to come alone. Though his expression of calm soon wa- washes away, being replaced 
with Nick being replaced. His expression of calm is replaced with an expression of confusion and fear. A red lightsaber ignites a second one, not Dooku's, one that is much more dangerous, with two giant-sized blades on the sides of it. Who will, so you are the Sith of Nu, Malgus says. Dooku replies, I am, and you are? You are not a Jedi, I sense you are strong in the dark side. But if you are not a Jedi, then I must ask you, who are you? And who would be as t foolish as to... Malgus then swings at Dooku, Dooku blocking it with his lightsaber. However, though Dooku is a great duelist, he is no match for Malgus's bronze. Though it does look like Dooku is winning, using his lightsaber skills, he elegantly avoids all of Malgus's more brutal attacks and swings. Dooku even managing to get a hit on Malgus's arm and leg, but that's all he's able to get a hit on. Even though Malgus is a much brutaler a fighter, he's also pretty darn good at defending himself. Oh, Dooku keeps trying to get an opening on Malgus, hopefully trying to hit the it's something, maybe his breathing respirator. There, Dooku then sends a swarm of force lightning at Malgus, only to have it be caught by Malgus. Malgus then sends the lightning back to Dooku, sending him flying backwards. Dooku tries to get up. Malgus grabs his lightsaber with his free hand and begins to punch Dooku in the face repeatedly with his other hand. And Dooku, though being a good duelist, his age gets to him. And after being punched about 20 times in the face, he... Well, he's about to give up and accept his fate. Malgus raises his lightsaber about to strike down Dooku when all of a sudden, two other blades ignite, being put at the neck of Malgus. Malgus then grabs Dooku's saber and puts at the neck of the person who, person who had the other lightsabers to him. Asajj Ventress, Dooku's personal assassin. Malgus then asks, who are you? Although Malgus does not get an answer, he is cut off again by two other lightsabers ignite, a blue one and a green one. The lightsabers of General Grievous. They're all at a standstill. Malgus still having well, Malgus having Dooku on the floor, looking very confused and beat up. Ventress with her lightsabers to Malgus's neck, Malgus with Dooku's lightsaber to her neck, and Grievous getting ready to strike. Malgus simply replies, which one of you is the master? From out of the shadows, he sees someone in a cloak arrive. I am the master. The shriveled voice says, Malgus turns his head to see me from another room. The, the other Sith Lord, Darth Sidious. Sidious then says, please, unig please, do not kill my apprentice. They're so hard to come by these days. Confirming Malgus's fears that there's not many Sith Lords left, Malgus deactivates his lightsabers, to which Sidious motions Ventress to turn off hers as, as well as Grievous. Malgus says, You are the master. I am Darth Sidious. The old man replies, And I will... And I fully know who you are. Ventress and Grievous obviously want an answer. Ventress says, Who is this man who dares attack? At, at such... A, he attacks during broad daylight. This man is clearly insane. Sidious replies, Not insane. A master battle tactician. This is Darth Malgus. Grievous and Ventress both have in shock expressions on their face, having heard the tales of the dangerous Sith Lord Darth Malgus, as well as Dooku, who looks utterly terrified. Dooku then replies, but Malgus has been dead for 10,000 years. Malgus then realizes what he says, 10,000 years. So the Sith of old are gone. 
I hate to break it to you, but the Sith of old went extinct eons ago, Sidious replies. The Sith of old, though there were many, they were a failure. It was Jedi versus Sith, and Sith versus Sith. It was endless war on all sides until another Sith Lord by the name of Darth Bane created the Rule of Two, saying there can only be one Master and one Apprentice at a time. Malgus then says, That's a stupid idea. The Sith of old, though there were many, we were strong. We could take down countless Jedi armies and the army of the Republic, no matter how many Jedi. There were an equal amount of us. But now... I return 10,000 years later only to discover that the Sith of old are no more. I sense there are only five dark side users in the universe. You, who I sense you are stronger than this Dooku or assassin girl you have. But I sense two others not here. I don't have any other apprentices. I only have Dooku. And who is the droid? I am not a droid, Grievous replies. Malgus then walks up closer and uses the force to check and see if what he says is true. He rips, well, he rips open Grievous's chest, revealing Grievous's, well, body parts. Mal Grievous shocked falls to his knees and begins to breathe heavily. So, you were human at one point. Like me. Malgus then picks up one of Grievous's lightsabers. A Jedi's weapon. You killed Jedi. Grievous, still having a hard time breathing, says, I have killed many Jedi in my life. Malgus then says, the Jedi, they still exist? Or there are only two Jedis at a time as well. Sidious replies, The Jedi of now are much different from the Jedis of old, but they are far more stronger than you can ever comprehend. The Jedi have grown stronger, Grievous replies. Dozens of them, and only few of us. But this war with the Jedi has gone on for too long. We now rely on both clones and droids. Victor, Sidious says. Until... Until one is either destroyed or surrenders. And we both know the Jedi will never surrender. The Sith of old are no more. We are the Sith of now. Malgus then walks away, contemplating everything he's heard. Malgus knows that his Sith Empire is gone. But perhaps he can do something else. Malgus turns around and says, I sense you are having a hard time destroying the Jedi. Sidious replies, we are. It seems every effort we get closer to, the Jedi and the clones are always there to defeat us. Malgus then ignites his lightsaber. Maybe I can be of assistance. And this is the end of What If Malgus Returned Part 1. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to go now. Bye. Have a nice day. God bless.